Well, one thing that's really different, I mean, kind of like what I mentioned is, I mean, it's different from city to city in the United States, but the size of Mexico City, because the houses are literally like this, like they'll be wall to wall. And in some of the houses, you'll have like 14 people that live in like a two bedroom house and things like that. Like you just see stuff like that all the time. So, I mean, that's definitely different. And also, I mean, even just washing clothes, like a lot of places you have to wash clothes by hand. So, I mean, that's one thing that I learned to do. I mean, uh, it was something that you take for granted here, having a washer and dryer. It's actually super nice. And then, I mean, um, another thing that's different is one thing that I actually really like better about Mexico versus here. So, I mean, here in the United States, to get groceries, you have to go to like, you know, Walmart, Smith's or Macy's or your local grocery store. But in Mexico, especially in Mexico City, they have little tiendas or little stores like on every single corner, on every street, there's like two or three. So, I mean, you, you don't have to go far. I mean, obviously you can't find what you can find in a Walmart there, but it's good, especially, I mean, as missionaries, you're in the street and you're, you get hungry, you know, you go buy a little, little, um, appetizer thing for like you know five pesos or whatever so it's just really nice that's one thing that i actually would really like to see here as far as you know like the the food goes because it does get super inconvenient sometimes to have to drive all the way out to a walmart whereas there you can go out and you can walk literally about 50 meters and then you arrive at, an, at a tienda and then you can buy all the essentials tortillas that's one thing i also miss is the tortillerias that they have like everywhere all the tortillas that they, they eat, they use tortillas as napkins and they use them as like forks. They, they eat tortillas with almost every single meal, which is, I mean, here we, we eat Mexican food, but it's not the same thing. I mean, it's similar in a lot of aspects, but that's one thing that I really think is pretty different as far as life goes, just the, the convenience. I mean, I would say it's a lot more convenient to actually live in Mexico City, just because it kind of like it's that huge city, everything's so close to you. Like there would literally be people that would live the, their whole entire lives without ever leaving the city limits. Just because, I mean, I mean, I mean, obviously some people wouldn't want to do that, but you you can stay because there's no reason. I mean, you can find everything you need in the city. So that's one thing that's definitely different because I mean, here you have to go to different stores and different places. Your work is oftentimes in another city, but there everything's just so close. You don't, you know, you can walk to work. You can take public transportation. The public transportation here, I mean, in New York and Los Angeles, obviously it's going to be better, but here in Utah, I mean, it's it's not that convenient because I mean, I've, there's been times before I had my car would have to take tracks and I'd have to, you know, take the front runner train. But in Mexico, it's so much more convenient because there's taxis all over and all you have to do is just hold your finger up like that and you can grab a taxi and the taxi can take you to the subway station. Then you just pay like, they raised the price while I was there, but like five pesos and you can go in the subway, which can pretty much get you from anywhere to, in the city from one point to another. And then you might have to transfer to a bus. But it's one thing that's definitely more convenient about living there. I mean, here, I mean, now that I have a car, it's not a problem getting around, but without a car, it's definitely easier to live there than here. So, I mean, those are just, just kind of some basics as far as um, lifestyle versus here versus there. In Mexico City, it's, it's really unique in the fact of kind of like the elevation I mentioned earlier. So there's pretty much three seasons in Mexico City. You have the hot season, you have the wet season, and you have the cold season. So in Mexico City, it rains a ton. There's a lot of rain, like it just floods the street. And especially when I was in my, one of my areas in Contreras, that the area that was above the whole city, kind of in the forest area, I was there during the... Uh, the end of the cold season beginning of the rain season and so it would rain almost every day and we'd have umbrellas but we would still just come back soaking wet and actually get pretty cold because we were higher than the rest of the city so i mean that's one thing that's different because i mean here i mean uh, well utah it's kind of unique you get this every single season in one day some days but but it's not definitely not as exaggerated down there with those the way that they have it, it gets it gets extremely hot it gets fairly cold it doesn't get quite cold enough for snow i mean every once every like 20 or 30 years it'll snow, but it does get very fairly cold and um, it also gets super wet when it rains. So that's kind of what the weather's like down there. So when you had to adjust to that, I mean, as a missionary, we'd have to have our warm coats, which I actually didn't bring one with me from, cause I didn't think I would need it. Um, so I mean, that's definitely one thing I'd recommend preparing. If you know, you're gonna go to Mexico city, then you know, you're gonna want to bring a coat, rain coat and a nice warm coat for the winter. So that's something that's really unique. And then as far as the uh, the crime rate goes, I mean, there's a lot more crime down in Mexico City just because the way that police handle crime is a little bit different. I mean, it's not as effective down there. It's more 
I guess, kind of chaotic, less organized. Actually, for me, I mean, there was two times when I had a kind of a run-in with that. We got mugged once. So we got me and my companion got beat on the back of the head, and then uh, we had to give up all our money. So I mean, I didn't like that because I'd only been out for like three months, and so I was still kind of wasn't super comfortable with the language yet. So that was not very fun. And then one of my other areas, there's this guy that followed us. And then the next day when we left, he had broken into our apartment and taken everything. So I lost my camera, all my money, everything. So that was not fun either. I mean, there's definitely a lot more crime. And um, just because when you call the police, it's not as quick like here where, you know, you call the police and they come right away to take care of it. And just because there's, and a lot of it has to do with just the, when you get a city that size, there's just not enough um, police to, to solve every problem and you get, you know, people stealing things a lot and people just because when you get million, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in, in a crowd, there's always going to be bad stuff happening. Like people get trampled to go into the subway station sometimes because it gets so crowded, things like that. So, I mean, there's definitely a lot more crime there versus here. I mean, here it's, it's a lot nicer. The, the crime rate's not as bad. I mean, obviously in those bigger cities, you get some of that, but not nearly as bad as what I saw in Mexico City. Like there'd be times where, you know, you just hear your the neighbors getting in fights and you'd hear gunshots at night every once in a while and things like that. You'd see people lying down on the street bleeding. So I mean, just kind of, kind of some scary things, but you know, that's just the difference, I guess. So one thing that's different, I mean, kind of like the, every, the, everyone takes public transportation and with work, I mean, a lot of people work within the city, so they don't really have to go very far for work. So that's kind of different. And as far as wildlife goes, I mean, uh, in the city, there's not really a whole lot. I mean, there's lots of pigeons. There's lots of, so sometimes there's a lot of mosquitoes in one of my areas, there's a bunch of flies. And then in other areas, there's tons and tons and tons of dogs that just run crazy in the street. Lots of cats, um, just all that. So you see a ton of that. And then in one of my apartments, actually, oh yeah, this is kind of different, I guess. We lived above a kitchen, which is really common that you'll have like um, little tiny stores selling things. And then, um, so then we lived above the kitchen. So there was cockroaches in our apartment all the time. So we, one time we made a flamethrower and burned them because we got frustrated with them. But so I mean, just things like that's kind of different. And another thing too about the lifestyle is it's it's a huge cultural difference as far as the food goes versus here. Actually, at first I was kind of it was kind of a I was kind of shocked to see it because I'd never been out of the country. But it's like they have these tacos. Um, the most famous ones are tacos al pastor. We have this huge tower, and then on the tower, like this, it's kind of like a tripod. They have this huge like slab of meat, and it's just they have it hot bricks cooking it, and they're turning it round and round. And they do that just like in the streets. I mean, here you would never see anything like that, just because of all the healthcare laws and, and things like that. Um, so I mean, that was something unique and different to see and to get used to. At first, I was hesitant to try the food try those street tacos, but after I did, I found out that they do taste pretty good. I mean, they actually taste really good. I definitely recommend them. You just have to, you know, make sure you're not eating from a dirtier place because there's some places that were just really, really bad. So that was kind of, that was kind of cool. And then another unique thing about Mexico City too is um, they have tons of earthquakes. Some of them are more severe than others. So I remember I got to experience probably about, I don't know, 12 or 12 to like 14 earthquakes, some of them smaller, some of them larger um, dur throughout the duration of my mission. I remember the first one I didn't, we lived in, the apartment we lived in was at the intersection of two busy streets in Mexico, Eje Cinco and Eje Central. So there was always constantly traffic at all or at all times of the day. So our apartment would shake back and forth when a big semi passed. So I kind of got used to that, but I remember it was in the middle of the night and it was actually shaking really bad. And so my companion was sick the night before, so I didn't wake him up, but he kind of got mad at me because I didn't afterwards. I didn't wake him up because I didn't want to disturb him, but it's like something's happening. So I knew it was an earthquake, so I was just kind of freaking out. So then I told him about it in the morning. He slept through it. He's like, why did you wake me up? I'm like, well, I was, I was you know, you didn't sleep or sick. So he's like, no, you should have woken me up. So that was something that I got used to experiencing the earthquakes. And it's just kind of a, a weird feeling when your body goes just starts moving and it's just something you have to experience to really understand it kind of gives you a headache and things like that so that's something unique um and also one thing about mexico city is the reason for that is because it's it was built there used to be this huge lake before um 
think it was called Tenochtitlan, I think. I can't remember exactly the name of the lake, but they drained the lake and then they built the city on there. So the city's always sinking a little bit. And so that's why there's all those earthquakes. So that's something that you have to get used to in Mexico City. So it makes everything a little bit different. And I mean, there's tons and tons of traffic. That's one thing that's different. It's not as organized there. They have traffic laws, but people don't follow them. And when people get in accidents, like it just turns into the person gets out of their car and starts attacking the other person. It's not as organized here. So I mean, here, if you get in an accident, you know, exchange insurance information, and then you pretty much never have to talk to that person again. But there, it's just almost doesn't happen. Just It's just so chaotic. So one thing I actually really got used to the pace was I actually really like it because um, you can use, there's a lot of things that you, I mean, they have the, the one peso coin, the two peso coin, the five peso coin, and the 10 peso coin, and things are down there are actually a lot cheaper, just kind of give an idea. I mean, obviously the exchange rate fluctuates, but um, one pay, or uh, there's about 13 to 14 pesos in a dollar, give or take, and then and obviously it changes every once in a while. Um, and the cost of living, it, I mean, it depends on the area because there's some areas of the, the mission that were super nice where the cost of living was was fairly expensive, even for just a one bedroom apartment, which is what the ones that we got. But in other areas, it was super cheap. Like I remember in my, my second area in Reforma, um, it was a actually it was a really crappy neighborhood to live in there's a lot of crime like we had a map of the neighborhood and then it's like this area you need to avoid after seven o'clock this area you need to avoid after six o'clock because some guy got stabbed here this time of day and some other guy got stabbed at this part of this this street so we'd avoid this whole area and that was like literally right next to where we lived um, so to live in that neighborhood it was actually really cheap like i remember we paid 2500 pesos for rent which is about 200 dollars and so in that apartment we had it was a two-bedroom apartment with a living room and then we also had a bathroom and in the bathroom there was a jacuzzi it was broken so we never used it but i mean we had that so it's a super nice apartment on the inside but the neighborhood itself was really really run down not very good and then in other areas that i'd been in we had to pay well, I did exchanges here. I never actually, this wasn't my area, but it was called Narvarte, just in the northern part, very northern part of the mission. And there it's a, closer to downtown. So you'd end up paying about like, you know, 5,000, 5,500 pesos for a tiny, tiny apartment of just one bedroom, a bathroom and a tiny living space. So, I mean, it's just, it's just kind of varies just from um, each part of the mission. But yeah, I mean, overall it's, I'd say, I mean, you could definitely, it's definitely cheaper to live there. Um, than to live here and but I mean obviously there's there's parts where it's more expensive in the nicer neighborhoods but on, on average I would say it's it's lower and it's a lot easier to to pay for things there and it's a lot more convenient to use the peso too I feel like just because I mean here with our coins and stuff with like a penny and a nickel and a quarter there's not really a lot that you can do with those unless you like get a bunch of them together and you can maybe use a quarter to get a gumball or something but but there if you have just a one peso like there's people in the subway lines that'll sell like pieces of the packs of gum or little chocolates for even for one peso so i mean you can literally use it and it's a lot more convenient because you, you know we work everything with the one the five and the ten and using the ten peso coins i mean and food's also a lot cheaper like they have a lot more little tiny tiny restaurants kind of like I mean they're less super less formal like there'll be just a kitchen next to someone's house and that'll be a little restaurant and you can buy yourself a really good meal for about 50 pesos like that's a you could easily get a nice meal a nice like three or four course meal which would be about for four dollars whereas you know here that you couldn't really do that with four dollars I mean it's a lot more expensive if you go to somewhere like Olive Garden it's gonna be a lot and I mean, just they don't really have that option to get a nice four dollar meal here. I mean, you can get fast food, but it's not the same thing. So I mean, that's one thing that's definitely unique about you know the the cost of living down there. It's a lot more. I feel like it's a lot costs a lot less, and it's there the, the money system there is pretty effective. I feel like here in Utah we have the grid system in other parts of the United States as well. There in Mexico they kind of do, but not really. So I mean, you'll get streets that are in shapes like S's and streets that are shaped like C's. And some in some places there's there's three streets that have like basically the same name. And so it's really the one thing that's it's actually a miracle that we're able to find some some addresses because in some streets they'll literally be like the the three houses number 67s and just things like that. So I mean, it just 
it's really chaotic the way it's organized. Um, you can't really trust a grid, a grid system because randomly the numbers will start changing and they'll just, they won't be in order. So there's just not a lot of order in the, the way the streets are organized. So I mean, it's really a miracle. We would always joke around and say the only people you know, that know those streets better than the missionaries are the, the postal carriers because everyone else, they don't know, like, the, they know how to get to places, but they don't know the name of the streets they take. So that's one thing that, too, that's kind of different because here, I mean, you ask for directions, people will tell you the street names, but there, if you ask for directions, like, oh, we'll take a left and then at the at the, the tortilleria, the tortilla store, take a right, things like that. Like, they don't know the name of the streets themselves. So that's one thing that's kind of interesting. And then just using a taxi is kind of cool. It's actually really convenient and it's, I mean here the taxes are more expensive but down there they were really nice I really miss I, I, there's a lot of times where I was like I wish I had a taxi to take me to you know back to my apartment or whatever so you know, that's that's just kind of some other things and then let's see oh one thing too that I really like um, here I mean we have the DI which is kind of a cool store I like to shop there every once in a while but there they have uh, these things called tiangis and basically what they are is they're kind of like a garage sale but um, in larger sizes. So they'll just basically, they'll close down a whole street and there'll be vendors there that'll just have like a tarp. And on that tarp, they'll just put, you know, different things they're gonna sell. Like in some Tiangis, you could find, you know, super nice cameras, you can find cell phones, you can find clothing, so you could find ties and things like that. Like we'd be able to find ties for like five pesos or three pesos even and things like that. So that's one thing that was really cool is because in the Tiangis, like they would also sell food and they'd have crazy good deals. And that's one thing I also miss as well, the fresh fruit. Cause there you can buy a mango and it's like, you know, three pesos or whatever. And you can buy bananas, they're super cheap. Um, but here, I mean, it's not fresh and it's more expensive. It's not as convenient. Cause here we have a lot of preservatives and we sell a lot of canned foods, whereas there, they mostly have those tiangis and they, they buy the food like literally like two days before and then they use it up. So it's just kind of part of the culture because so they have those tiangis like once a week. Usually there's in every single neighborhood, there's different tiangis. And so I think that was one of my favorite things walking through there and they'll have like free samples sometimes and just all sorts of things. And it's just a really cool experience to see all the things that people have for sale from clothing to, to food, to magazines, to movies to even just DVD players and just everything, like anything you can imagine, they, they sell in the Tiangui. So that's kind of something kind of cool about Mexico City that I, wouldn't, I would think it would be kind of cool to see here sometime.